What we're going to start working on today is um, Google Sheets. Google Sheets is an example of a spreadsheet program. If you're familiar at all with Microsoft Excel, it essentially does the same sorts of things. Obviously, this is something that is based on the internet, um, and you have to store this online, although you can download it and store it locally if you wish. Um, we're going to, again, go to our faithful button over here for Google Apps. And you'll notice in my case that Google Sheets is up here next to Docs. That has a lot to do with the fact that I've used this on several occasions. If you don't find it there, you can always click More, and other uh, Google Apps will show up. Now, if these are, if it doesn't show up here, and it should, but it may not, you can always go to more from G Suite Marketplace, and there are other ones that may show up. But again, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, if it doesn't show up here, it'll show up when you press the More button. I'm going to press More uh, on Sheets. And what we're going to work with here is the following. Now, I'm going to leave the first two lines, uh, two rows blank. Um, as you'll notice, everything is set up in terms of a series of columns or a series of rows. Each entry on this is called a cell and can contain a single value. Now, the values that you have here may not be literally the number that you see on the screen. There may be resting behind it a formula that is calculating that based on, in many instances, the contents of other cells nearby. Now what we're going to do is a is um, a look at a computer science problem that most beginning programming students got when I was college age, and maybe this shows my age more than I care to admit, uh, calculating that if you that if you took the money that the Canarsie Indians got for Manhattan Island in 1625, and stuck it in the bank at 5% interest, which these days is a very generous rate. Let's see what they would have a few years later. We're going to do this from 1625 to 1664. We could do it for all the way down to 2018. The problem is that that's a lot more rows than we're willing to deal with here. So I'm going to mark this one as year. This will be 5% interest. This will be 6% interest. And each time what I'm doing is I'm hitting the right arrow key. If I hit any of the cursor control keys, right arrow, left arrow, up arrow, down arrow, uh, it will move us out of the cell and it will record in the cell whatever it is that we've been typing. 7% interest, one more right arrow, and now 10% percent interest. Now the year I'm starting out with is 1625. This time I hit the enter key and you can see why I didn't use it before. It's taking me not in the direction that I'm really looking to go in. So I'll come over here and I'll put in 24. And since I want to copy this value over, um, I can do the following. You'll notice here the little box down here and this will allow me to fill the other boxes in going to the right with the same value. Now I'm going to want to go down a good number of rows. So I'm going to mark here equals, click on the cell, that's the cell that I've chosen is A4, column A, row 4, plus 1. And you'll notice rather than seeing equals A4 plus 1, I see 1625. I'm going to come here, equals 1.05 times B4. Now, 1 times B4 will give me the principal. 0 0.05 times B4 gives me the interest as well. So what you're seeing here is the value with the compound interest added on. Now I'm going to come here, and I'm going to copy this formula down to the rest of the cells. And obviously, I don't want this to be 0.5% interest. I want it to be 6. So I'll come up here, and I will change this 
from 1.05 to 1.06. I'll come here and I'll come back up here and I'm going to change this from 1.05 to 1.07. I'll then come over here and I'll change this to 1.10. And you'll notice here that I have all the various values that I want. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag a, I'm going to drag across and then I'm going to drag down. I want to go down all the way to cell 43. And you'll notice that gives me the 40 years that I want. But you'll notice that a lot of the numbers I have here don't look the way we normally record money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag across the top and I'll hit the dollar sign. And you'll notice all the, the money is, re, is reformatted the way we would expect to see money written. The problem with this is the following. The, I don't want the dollar sign in front of all the entries. I only want on the first and the last. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag all the way. Um, I'm going to get rid of that and do that again. And I'm going to drag all the way down through here. And I'm going to go to Format, Number. And here I'm just going to go for um, Plain, actually Financial. Now you'll notice that because the rows above aren't using currency, we went back here to all these fractional places, and I'm going to hit Format as Currency again. Now at this point, I have all the figures that I want, but the table doesn't look quite the way I want it to. This one heading, I'm going to want right aligned. So for the horizontal align, I'll come here and right aligned. This would be for vertical alignment, and I'm not concerned with that. Um, I'm now going to come over to these as well, and again, right aligned. I'm going to come across the top of this. Now, I want to a certain formatting, and by picking these cells, I'm sorry, I'm going to now click here, resize column, fit to data, and it only does it for the column where I typed it. So we're going to have to do this a few more times. Right click, come down here to resize, and I want it to fit the data. I'll click here on column C, I'll come up to where the C is right click and then I can resize and again to fit data column where the D is right click resize column fit to data and again here too right click and resize column fit to data now what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to put my name here. Actually, to just make sure that you don't write my name, your name goes here. Now I need titles on this. And the titles are going to be Effect of Compound Interest, Current Balance at Colon. Now, I don't want this, I want this centered, and I'm going to merge this over several fields, and this is what's going to allow me to merge. I'm going to do the same thing here, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to correct my spelling, and it's all pointing and clicking. And... and merge 
In both cases, what I'm going to do is come here, horizontal align, and I want them centered. I'm also going to make it 12 point. Now, at this point, this is pretty much what we're looking for. To print it out, file, download as PDF document. And I'm going, I want, don't want it in this format. I want it in portrait. So I have the whole thing going down. Now, in many instances, when we are working with spreadsheets, we will want to have it in landscape format that helps our, that serves our purposes in most instances better. But in this case, this is what we're going to go for. I'm going to export. And you can see that I have it here within my uh, within my window. And I'm going to save it on my computer as well. I'm going to call it compound. I generally urge you in every instance to save any and all of your work. If for any reason I don't get the transmission of it, this way you still have a backup and you don't have to redo the assignment if I fail to get it from as a result of this. In either case, that's pretty much it for this.